Hello and welcome to this video and today I want to introduce you to an app that I've been loving the past few weeks. It's called Drafting App and it's available for Android and I'm using this app to work with Obsidian on my Android. Why do I use this app? First of all, I've tried a few apps before that promise to work with Markdown inside my Android alongside to Obsidian. And why do I want that? Because softwares like Obsidian, they are a little bit more complex. They take a little bit of time, quite a few seconds to load, uh, which if you're a productivity nerd, you don't want to wait. You want to just capture things as they come and just let them go into your inbox, if you will. And Obsidian takes a little bit of a while to load and then you have to create a new note and then start tapping away. It's great. I love it. I use it in every device I want, but I need a quick capture system and this app is it. I love it and I'm going to show you here so that you can see why do I love this app so much and what you can do with it. So. My screen is going to come here and I'm going to show you. So um, I didn't change the app icon as I usually do for the apps that come into my front screen. Um, but then you can see the icon you will see when you go into the Google Play Store to find this. So it's the drafting app. Once you click in the app, mine is with the settings showing up, but you're going to be starting this screen, this totally blank screen with the new draft name at the top. And this is just it. It's just a blank page that you can click and start typing away and it's going to create your new notes. Super simple, no more than that. You have the menus at the bottom uh, for like archiving, editing, highlighting and bold and italic and all those things that you also have on Obsidian. What makes this app great is on the settings. So let's go to the settings and see a few of them that I think make this app great if you work with productivity and knowledge management on your Obsidian. The first set of default uh, settings is about the location. So you can set three locations for your notes. One for new notes created, one for archived notes and one for templates. I personally don't use archived notes. There is not a concept that exists in my system. Everything goes into a specific folder. So I just set my default location and I just set the same location for the archived, just to be safe, anything goes there. But I don't use the archived thing, really. If you do, you have this here as well, so you can use it. And templates is the first thing I love about this app because any other app that I used, um, they could manage Markdown, but I couldn't use my templates. And I use daily templates. I use templates for specific notes. If I want to create a note really fast, I want to put my template on it because when I'm going to process, it's going to be easier. I don't have to put the template and then adjust the content that I had written before on the template that I put at the time. I just want to create a note with a template and then start typing. And it allows me to do that, as you can see on the screen. So you can set the folder. And it's just as simple as clicking on it and waiting for the pop-up screen to show you your file browser so you can choose your uh, folder. And you can click here at the top to go around all your folders. These are my folders on Obsidian. And I just select the templates one and click select. It's going to be here. You do the same for the other options. Then you have some options for the draft, like default name, default extension and things like that. Also something great about this app, it's that it's very, very intuitive. So if you go around these options, there is the name of the option in a little bit of a description of what it does. So, you know, and it's quite easy to navigate around it. The one I want to point out is the default file extension. At least for me, when I downloaded it, it was in text file, not on Markdown. So I made sure to put it on Markdown because it's 
the file Obsidian uses and is the one I prefer to use as well. So just that reminder for you. And I unchecked this timestamp at the top because I don't want the timestamp to be showing when I create a new note. As I said, I have my templates and I like to use them. So I don't need this. And then you have some settings for the editor and you can just select the sizes of fonts and all those things. If they finish, they close the brackets and all the parentheses and all those things when you put one, it's here. I leave it marked because I like to use that function to uh, save a little bit of time. Uh, then you can define heading sizes and you can have some options here about file management within this app. Also, you have some other uh, settings here, but as I said, they are very intuitive. You can go around them. They're, they make the app super great so you can see what fits you and what doesn't fit you. One other thing that I want to show you in this video that I think is fantastic because I've been using it is this custom menu. As you can see, I have two lines of a menu sort of thing for editing the file and working with the file. The first one is your primary menu, let's say, and the second one is the functions or the actual items you can use to edit or do some changes within your notes. And if I click on any of the icons at the top, you're going to see that the options change. So it's like master menus. So you have this one, which is a custom one. I'm going to talk about it in a bit. You have the archived one, which handles copy, paste, uh, files, locations, and uh, your favorites and things like that. Then you have the editing one with like the headings, bold, italic, and all those things, and creating checkbox and whatnot. Then you have the editing of blocks, so you can move things up and down without having to cop and paste. You just come here and you can see you have options to move a block up or move a block down or things like that. You have some uh, special functions uh, to put date, time, cop and paste, uh, you also have some specific functions on the format of the editor, lowercase, uppercase, and things like that, and some other stuff about sharing. The one I want to talk about, which is also something great about this app, and you should check it out, is this custom menu. As the name say, you can uh, customize it and put the ones you really like to use. And it's the one that stays open all the time. So I like that because I can customize it to be only the functions that I really need. And here you can see the functions that I really need. I make myself a specific menu that only fills this little part of my screen. I didn't put a lot of functions here just the essentials because I don't like to be rolling things around. I like to be quick and go. So I have bold and italic because uh, I like just clicking on it. I got used to it on my computer and on my tablet. I have a big keyboard to work with, so I have no problem using the markdown little codes to format the text. But once I am on my phone, um, it's a little bit more uncomfortable to do that. So if I have a button that I just click and start typing inside the little codes of Markdown, that's great for me. So I put bold and italic, which are the ones I use more, and the uh, tab functions to space the lines. So if I want to make lists and sublists, I use this two a lot. So I put them here. I also put here the favorites which we are going to talk about, and the templates. As I said, I have templates, I like to use them. I have them here. So if I click here, it opens all my templates so that I can set them here on the new draft I'm creating. And a delete button, because sometimes, uh, especially these past weeks I was testing this app, I found myself creating a lot of 
uh, testing files and I wanted to delete, delete them quickly. So I just put the delete button here to make my life easier. So for the favorites, what do you do? So if you click on the favorites, you're going to have here uh, my two favorites, which is my daily folder. So I can quickly go to one of my daily notes or if I go back to my favorites, I also have a promise, I promised land note, which is a book that I'm reading. So uh, it's actually an uh, audio book. So uh, my annotations on the book are really me picking up my phone as a list and, and putting something that caught my attention. So I have it here for now because I am using it a lot, which helps me uh, open notes fast in this app because I can put the ones I know I use on a daily basis. So that's it. And on the bottom here, you have the option to add more things to that uh, menu of favorites there. So you can look into these folders to find the notes or the folders. You can favorite specific notes or specific folders, which is great because um, I put them here in the daily notes, for example, is something that I access every single day and I want to, and it changes every single day because every day I have a new daily note. So I cannot just put one daily note as my daily notes because it's going to change tomorrow. And it doesn't make sense. So I put the folder and I set the sorting on the folders to be the last uh, edited file. So I always have my most recent daily notes on top okay and you can do that by going to the settings that an op there is an option there to do that so my final review about this app as you can see I, I already told you what I liked most about it but it's a really nice and fast app to work with quick capture it's uh, easily integrated at your obsidian on Android I particularly don't use obsidian sync as the recording of this video I'm thinking about trying it but I use a uh, way of syncing my obsidian vault that I put on Google Drive into my phone and things go both ways so when I edit on my phone when I edit on my computer when I edit on my tablet it always go to Google Drive and it then goes to the other devices so this works perfectly with this system that I'm using. Uh, as I said, you can set your default locations, your favorites, create your own editing menu here on the front screen, and it it has zero friction. At least the way I work, it's zero friction. It's great because I can just open this app and it's going to open a new file. Uh, it even open up my keyboard and I can just start typing. I don't have to click on the screen to start typing on my keyboard. My keyboard is already up. I just put things down and then I close and I go about my day. And when something else comes up, I go there again and do the same, okay? Uh, this is what I think about this app. I'm totally going to be keep using it. I hope you like this video. If you try the app, if you have any questions, drop them down below. And if you like this video, please give it a like because it helps me a lot. I hope to see you in future videos, maybe. Um, and bye.